We were slaves. We belonged to people. Their voices are haunting. They know enough about reading right that all that I know is the teachers of mine your master and your missus. Their stories are true. Board colors will put you up on a block and sell you big job. The highest will be to get you. The highest will be to get you. They are the voices of those who endured a life in bondage. They tell a story that is often hard to hear from a time in America's history that many would like to forget. Their stories are the most authentic and realistic accounts of slavery during the antebellum period in America. However, few people today even know these narratives exist. Written and audio recordings of slave narratives serve as powerful reminders that history has often overlooked the most important aspect of slavery, the slave. These individuals had families, they had beliefs, and they had stories to tell. But most importantly, they had names. They had an identity that was entirely their own. My name is Isa Moses. Charlie Smith. My name is Fountain Hughes. Slave narratives provide an invaluable source in communicating an accurate history of slavery in the United States. These narratives are the key to understanding the lives of enslaved African Americans and the institution of slavery. The voices of the slaves were once perceived as irrelevant in conveying the history of slavery in the United States. However, beginning in the 1930s, government officials realized that the last generations of Americans who had experienced slavery firsthand was quickly dwindling and that in order to preserve this part of history, it was important that the stories of former slaves be collected and recorded. Between 1936 and 1938, over 2,300 narratives were gathered from former slaves as a part of the Federal Writers Project. This project was initiated by the Works Progress Administration, or WPA, as one of President Franklin D. Roosevelt's New Deal agencies that sought to employ Americans to carry out public works projects. The Federal Writers Project sent out-of-work writers to conduct interviews with former slaves in 17 states with the purpose of capturing the first-hand accounts of slavery told by former slaves themselves. The former slaves who were in their 60s, 70s, and older were interviewed by the writers on subjects such as slave life, the Civil War, emancipation, and life as a freed American. The narratives often communicated in great detail the sexual abuse of black women by their owners and the inhumane workload that the slaves were subjected to. Slaves describe the brutality they experienced and the whippings and floggings they suffered at the hands of their masters. The WPA collection of slave narratives represented a diverse sampling of interviews with a large group of people who each had their own unique stories to tell. Their stories communicated a new narrative of what it truly meant to be a slave. They give a window into slavery that you don't get just by thinking about enslaved people as a group because these are done by individual people and them telling their story to see um, the life stories of those people, I think is, it, it helps history a lot. It helps us understand what went on during those times. Perhaps one of the most powerful collections of slave narratives were recorded between 1932 and 1975 in nine states across the South. These narratives included a set of audio recordings with the voices of 23 former enslaved African Americans who told their individual stories. Although the collection only represents a small group of individuals, the recordings are powerful, one-of-a-kind histories of slavery in America. Unlike other historical accounts of slavery, which focus on dates, places, and events, these audio recordings capture the emotions of former slaves and illustrate the humanity aspect of slavery that was often overlooked. Many recordings depicted the love felt between slaves and their family members. Other stories told of the anguish that mothers felt when they were separated from their children, knowing that they would never see them again. Former slaves were recorded singing their favorite spirituals as they described how important their faith had been to them, and that this faith, prayer, and song are what helped them endure the day-to-day -day anguish that they often experienced. Oh, sisters, keep your lamp a trimmed and a burning. Keep your lamp a trimmed and a burning. Keep your lamp a trimmed and a burning.
burning just like the light of gold. These recordings, collectively known as Voices Remembering Slavery, Freed People Tell Their Stories, along with the WPA collection titled Born in Slavery, Slave Narratives from the Federal Writers Project, 1936 through 1938, provide a raw and real look into what the slaves experienced on a daily basis. Although slave narratives provide some of the most accurate and significant historical evidence regarding slavery, they have also been the subject of skepticism. Many people believed the slaves did not provide accurate information because they feared repercussions if they said something that the white interviewers did not approve of. Others believed the narratives were often nothing more than fictitious stories meant to shock and enthrall readers by highlighting and exaggerating the most shocking aspects of slavery, such as the whippings, sexual abuse, and inhumane treatment. Slave narratives were dismissed as uh, fictions or exaggerations. These were usually these criticisms were usually advanced by people who uh, who had uh, had a desire to make slavery look uh, good or to defend slavery or to, uh, you know, for other racist reasons, uh, try to impugn the integrity of people of, uh, of color who, who had uh, the, the nerve to tell the truth about uh, things that, that most white people, particularly in the 19th and early 20th centuries, didn't want to hear about. With the emergence of the civil rights and black power movements in the United States in the 1960s and 70s, there were renewed conversations about race relations and racism in America. The demand for social justice and a call to end racial prejudices caused many to question the past and to discover where these injustices had originated. This curiosity led many to draw from the collections of slave narratives to find the answers they needed regarding the roots of racism in America. The reality is, if you dig into pretty much any aspect of this country, you will find that there is a backstory that is very grounded in slavery and oppression and racism that will explain to you precisely why we're at the moment that we're at. The slave narratives became a valuable source in communicating this traumatic part of history and made it possible for generations of Americans to be able to view slavery through a different lens. Today, historians continue to view the slave narratives as important historical documents that help communicate an understanding of slavery by providing a voice to those who were once silenced. It was, it was actually the first time that uh, formerly enslaved people were able to uh, tell their story. Usually, others told their story. You know, this was the first time they were actually asked questions about their lives without, you know, an interpretation from others. The narratives have contributed significantly to the understanding of American history by providing insight into the day-to-day -day operations of the system from the point of view of the slaves themselves, which has afforded historians a deeper understanding of the complex institution of slavery. Although slavery officially ended in 1865, it continues to shape race relations and the political structure of the United States. We continue to see evidence that suggests that the same racist views that fueled the ideals of slavery are still present in America today. The social injustices that continue to occur demonstrate that even in the 21st century, race is still very much an issue of contention in the United States. In every Black Lives Matter rally or when a Confederate statue falls, there are echoes of the voices of those who endured and whose stories should never be forgotten in history. Their narratives communicate haunting and somber reminders of what life was truly like for African American slaves and are key to understanding one of the most tragic times in America's history. If I thought, had any idea, that I'd ever be a slave again, I'd take a gun and just end it all right away. Because you're nothing but a dog. Just like the light of gold.